The average person attempts to dress themselves on a reasonable budget, searching for bargains at mainstream retailers. Others attempt to recycle textiles and buy their clothes secondhand at thrift stores. But for the ultra-rich, clothing is a sign of status, and luxury brands are an essential way to express wealth. From French designers to Italian imprints, we're counting down the top 10 luxury style brands. Coach is a luxury brand founded in 1941 in New York that is best known for their distinctive handbags. They were founded under the name Manhattan Leather Bags by Lillian and Miles Kahn. The founder became impressed by the design of a baseball glove, and it inspired him to create a handbag with similar attributes. Working with six artists, he created a collection consisting of 12 handbags. Like a baseball glove, these bags were made from high-quality leather and featured excellent stitch work and craftsmanship. Then, in the 1970s, Coach decided to fill the role of the affordable luxury brand. Though their bags are not cheap, they can easily be found for around $300. This is much less than many of their competitors who artificially inflate the price of their goods. Now the brand is one of the biggest multinational fashion imprints on the globe. They have 900 stores in 20 countries and a total value of $3.2 billion. Today, Coach's corporate headquarters remains in Midtown Manhattan on 34th Street, in the location of their former factory lofts. In August 2016, the company finalized the sale and leaseback of its office condo portion of 10 Hudson Yards, its headquarters. Coach received $707 million before transaction costs. They have come a long way from emulating a baseball in the 1940s. The story begins at the corner of the Piazza Venezia in Rome in 1925, when there was a small Fendi boutique and next door to it a fur and leather workshop owned by Eduardo and Adele Fendi. The original model of the Fendi brand was to make fur coats accessible to people of all socioeconomic classes. During the first half of the 1900s, ownership of a fur garment was a dream of many women. But following the social changes that occurred in the 60s and 70s, fur came to be seen as old-fashioned and bourgeois. Fur coats are still out of fashion, forcing Fendi to come up with another signature product. In 1965, they gained the insight and leadership of legendary fashion designer Karl Lagerfeld. Under his guidance, they released the signature baguette handbag, for which the company is now known. These bags regularly sell for three to five thousand dollars, which helps contribute to Fendi's overall valuation of three point six billion dollars. Though the company is technically a subsidiary of fashion behemoth LVMH, they are the ninth most valuable luxury brand in their own right. This includes an annual revenue of over one billion dollars. In 1856, Burberry was found in Basingstoke, United Kingdom, by Draper Thomas Burberry. His original focus was outdoor-ready attire, stuff that was favored by Lord Kitchener and Lord Baden-Powell. He created Burberry at 21 years old, founded on the principle that clothing should be designed to protect people from the British weather. In the First World War, the Burberry trench coat was worn by British officers in the trenches. It was known as the tie lock-in and featured a belt with no buttons and protected the body from head to toe. Burberry had such a durable design that its clothes were envied by armed forces everywhere, though they had an exclusive deal with the British military. Originally focusing on the development of outdoor attire, the fashion house has moved into the high fashion market, developing a unique fabric called gabardine, which is completely breathable and waterproof and exclusively made for the brand. Their pattern-based scarves, trench coats, and other fashion accessories are one of a kind. Now with almost 500 locations and a revenue of almost $3 billion, Burberry is easily one of the biggest luxury brands in the world. The brand is valued at $4.1 billion, making them number eight on our list. However, they created a stir when it was revealed that they burn $37 million worth of product every year. This is a common practice in the fashion industry as it creates the illusion of scarcity. But in a world struggling with poverty and starvation, many people question the morality of this business decision. Cartier has a brand value of $6.3 billion, making it the seventh most valuable luxury brand in the world. And unlike many other brands on this list, Cartier has always been a brand associated with high fashion and wealthy clientele. Founded in Paris in 1847 by Louis-Francois Cartier, the firm came to dominate international jewelry design in the early 20th century under the auspices of his three enterprising sons, Louis Cartier in Paris, Pierre Cartier in New York, and Jacques Cartier in London. Then in 1904, Cartier had the breakthrough of a lifetime. Before this, wristwatches were only for women. Wealthy men from the high society were only wearing pocket watches. But after his aviator friend complained about the struggle to use it while flying, Alfred Cartier had the idea of a more practical watch. This was the introduction of the male wristwatch, which has become a staple of the luxury goods market. The rest is history, and Cartier has guaranteed its status in the world of high fashion forever. Inextricably linked to its eponymous muse, Chanel was formed by Pierre Wertheimer and Coco Chanel in 1909. Coco Chanel began her career in fashion by designing hats. 
In 1912, Chanel's first products to become popular were customized hats for the glamorous women of Deauville, France. What made them stand apart was that Chanel's hats rejected over-the-top ornamentation in favor of simpler, minimal details, such as a singular feather or camellia. In the 1920s, Chanel took her thriving business to new heights. She launched her first perfume, Chanel No. 5, which was the first to feature a designer's name. Perfume is the unseen, unforgettable, ultimate accessory of fashion that heralds your arrival and prolongs your departure, Chanel once explained. The Chanel product brands have been personified by male and female fashion models, idols, and actresses, including Nicole Kidman, Anna McLawless, Audrey Tatao, Kira Knightley, Kristen Stewart, G Dragon, Pharrell Williams, Cara Delevingne, Jenny Kim, and Marilyn Monroe. More than a century later, the company is far removed from Coco Chanel, but not from her vision of long-term success. The company has revenue exceeding $11 billion and an overall valuation of $7 billion, making it number six on our list. Though Rolex is synonymous with Swiss watch design, its roots are not in Switzerland. The company got its start in England when German watchmakers Hans Wildorf and his brother-in-law Alfred Davis founded the watch brand Wilsdorf & Davis in 1905. Most of their pocket watches bore a W and D hallmark inside the case back. These pocket watches are extremely rare today and are typically worth a small fortune. The company moved to Geneva after World War II to avoid heavy taxation in order to pay for the costly war. Rolex established itself as a pioneering brand through a series of records. In 1910, a Rolex was the first wristwatch in the world to receive the Swiss Certificate of Chronometric Precision, granted by the official watch rating center in Bienne. In 1926, Rolex patented the first waterproof watch, its famous Oyster. Then in 1953, the Submariner was the first diver's watch waterproof to a depth of 100 meters. That same year, Rolex reached the summit of Mount Everest with the expedition that included Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. These days, the company is doing very well for itself, with a total valuation of $7.9 billion. With 6,000 employees and a revenue of almost $5 billion, the company is a veritable fashion titan. Mario and Marino Prada founded a shop called Fratelli Prada in Milan in 1913. The shop specialized in artisanal leather goods which mostly consisted of imported handbags and luggage trunks from England. It's very unlikely that the two brothers had any idea the Prada name would grow into the vast fashion empire we know today. As a family business, the Prada legacy is an interesting one. Mario Prada believes strongly that the women in his family shouldn't run the family business, but it was his daughter rather than his son who took over from him. This was because Mario's son had no interest in taking over the Prada business when his father died. They are now the second biggest Italian fashion brand in the world, and the second biggest overall, with numerous offerings from leather handbags, travel accessories, shoes, perfumes, and other fashion accessories. They have an annual revenue of almost $4 billion, and an impressive overall valuation of $9.4 billion. Gucci O Gucci, founder of the Gucci brand, was the son of a leather worker in Florence. His family was extremely impoverished and struggled to cover even the most basic expenses. Gucci respected his father, but vowed never to live in the same squalor. As soon as he was able, he started taking odd jobs and moved all across Europe, searching for a better life. In Paris and London, he took night classes and tried to ingratiate himself into the high fashion world. And though it took decades, he finally succeeded in capitalizing on his newfound skills. In the end, he used the same leatherworking abilities that his father taught him as a child, but aimed his products at a wealthier audience and eventually created a company that is currently valued at $12.7 billion. The history of Gucci is fraught with intrigue and crime. If Guccio Gucci was the godfather of his fashion empire, then he passed that title on to his son Rodolfo, and then his grandson, Maurizio Gucci. Maurizio was well-liked and ran the business competently, but many have mentioned that it was almost impossible to do business in Italy without dealing with the mafia. The Gucci family was no exception. They interacted with the mob regularly and kept the community in harmony. Though the company claims they are law-abiding these days, it's unclear if they still have ties to organized crime. Thierry Hermes started this family business in 1837. Long before the famous scarves and Birkin bags, Hermes was a harness maker who provided gear for the houses of royals throughout Europe. His grandson, Emile Maurice, modernized the family business. He brought in his friends Louis Renault and Ettor Bugatti to make trunks for cars. Emile Maurice also diversified the company into furniture, belts, and couture. But it is Jean-Louis Dumas, a descendant of Thierry Hermes, that is credited with turning Hermes into a global giant in luxury fashion. Though LVMH attempted to take over Hermes in 2011, it has stayed autonomous. The brand has also succeeded in expanding into the Chinese market, which has a ravenous appetite for luxury goods. Hermes is comfortably the second most valuable luxury brand in the world, with an astonishing value of $19.2 billion. The French company makes more than $6 billion every year and is leading the race in expansion into the Chinese market, meaning it stands to grow immensely in the coming years. 
Louis Vuitton is debatably the most classic clothing brand in the world. It has been a staple of celebrity fashion for more than a century, with patrons ranging from Audrey Hepburn to the Empress of France. The company was founded by its namesake, Louis Vuitton, in 1854 and has quickly grown to one of the biggest brands on earth. The company operates in 50 countries, with more than 460 stores worldwide. Their bags are consistently sold for thousands of dollars apiece. Despite this prohibitive price, they have numerous customers, because the company has a valuation of $28.4 billion, making it the 15th most valuable brand in the world and the most valuable fashion brand in the world. In truth, Louis Vuitton is just the core brand of fashion kingpin LVMH. The CEO of this parent company, Bernard Arnault, recently overtook Bill Gates to become the second wealthiest man on earth. However, it's worth noting that unlike Bill Gates, Arnault has not committed to donating his fortune within his lifetime. In fact, he is not renowned for philanthropy and has been criticized for Louis Vuitton's practice of burning unused merchandise to create scarcity. Regardless, he sits at the helm of the most valuable luxury style brand in the world.